Thanks, guys. Um, <laughs> okay, so while, while I'm here, I'm not a teacher, so you can call me Adam tonight. Because um, I'm not a teacher tonight. Um, but just, I guess, as a real, real quick kind of, uh, I guess, background for me, I used to actually work in a church, do stuff very much like this for about eight years. On Friday nights, of uh, about eight or ten years of my life, I did this every single Friday night. Um, so, uh, good time to bring back some memories. And, um, yeah, so, I suppose what I want to do tonight is talk about a topic, um, and I am using a video, as you guys have been doing over the last, I think it's been this term. And what I want to do is talk about God's protection. But before I get into that, I guess I want to kind of set it up, I suppose. Um, so, I, if... If I can ask you guys um, to respect me while I'm talking, kind of not have your own conversation at school, if you want to switch off, that's your decision. Um, but just to not be really distracting from people around you, that'd be cool. Sorry, I um, just scratched my face. I guess I'm thinking about what I want to talk about and, and how I want to cover it. Uh, talking about some things, you know, as Christians, some things we get about God. You know, we kind of grasp the concept, but some things we don't. Some things about God are... They're too big to grasp. Like it hurts your brain when you try and understand it. And and I kind of I guess as you grow in your relationship with God and you, and you get a little bit older in your relationship with God, you kind of understand some things. But there's some things that we just like we don't get some things about God. There's some things that we believe but are just completely false. By the way, if my eyes look a little bit weird or blunted or like I've been in a fight, um, I fought six guys last week. I had a eye surgery on Wednesday morning. Um, and it was one of the most painful experiences of my life. That's why I have bruising all in my eyes. So if I look, probably not see from here, but if I look that way, you can see all like red blood. Anyway, um, so if I look weird or if oh, I, I know like, how that putting feels. drops in my eyes later, it's not drugs. It's just um, it's eye drops. Just so you know. Um, but yeah, so there's some things that we that we do believe about God. You know, we kind of they're, they're probably false, and there's some things that we don't understand. See, if I if you guys sitting out there, if you could understand the things that I've learned, that I know now, um, if I knew when I was 13 or 14 or 15 what I know now, my whole life would have been completely different. Completely different. If I knew what I know about God, my life would be completely different. Um, you see, probably around about the age of you guys right now, unless you're 17, like 13, 14, 15, um, at your age, I found out that my parents were going to get divorced. Remember the end of year nine? Um, and uh, sitting in the car, and mum just told me, and it was, it was pretty devastating. Even though Holland wasn't fantastic, um, it was still pretty devastating. And I guess, to give you a background, I, I suppose, for me as a, as a kid growing up, I was a bit of a weak kid. I, I know it's really hard to uh, imagine, because I'm so normal now, but... Um, I was a bit of a weird kid. I, I remember, I don't remember, I remember I was four years old. I was told that when I was four, um, I was at my grandma's house and she was in the kitchen cooking because she was an awesome cook. And you could see the garage through the window where the kitchen was. And apparently I was in the garage, uh, four years old. I was up on top of a wheelie bin and um, I had a chain wrapped around one of the beams in the garage and I had that chain also wrapped around my neck. Um, so my grandma raced out to, well, as, as fast as grandmas could run, raced out to the garage, and uh, she's like, no, stop, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm going to swing. And uh, she's like, why? And I was like, because it's fun. Um, so I just, I don't know, I was a little bit slow, I didn't kind of grasp some things. True story, when I was uh, probably about 14, 15, 16, after mama left, there were a lot of, like, especially Saturday mornings where I'd wake up and I was only on net. Um, because Dad was off doing stuff and Paul was off studying or partying or whatever, my brother. Um, so it was just me. And the way my house was designed is that you walk in the front door, the phone's there, then you've got a corridor and a big family room, then you've got a corridor and my bedroom. And often I'd wake up to a phone call on Saturday morning. And the way that the corridors work is, you know when you wake up 
and you're not really with it, especially when you woke up in a job, especially when you're teenager and you woke up with a job, it's kind of like, and I'm running down the corridor, like, and I get to the family room where the break is in the hallway, and the problem with my hallway in my old house is that it would, it would move to the right, like a meter, and, and there were often times where I didn't take that into consideration. So I would be like, rrr, 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 and I, I, sometimes I didn't move it, I, I didn't sidestep at all. So I would just be into the wall. It was, and this is true. And there was even sometimes where I would move, because I was sprinting to get to the phone, I would move, but not enough. So my shoulder and my, I remember times my shoulder and my hip would clip the wall, and it would be instant numbness. And I'd be like, uh, like and I'm, I'm being dead serious. I would be dragging the left side of my body to get to the phone because I didn't want to miss the phone call. Because everyone wants to answer the phone when you're, you know, teenager. Right? Anyway, <laughs> so, swinging in the garage, running into walls. I did do PA when I was in primary school, so there must have been something going on up here, but I just didn't get some things. And, you know, sitting in the car um, at the end of year eight, and you know, trying to grasp the concept that my family was going to completely fall apart. Um, and it was, it was really tough, but... Because in, in, in primary school, being in primary school, year one, year four, I was champion boy everything. I loved athletics, long distance, short distance, triple jump, long jump, high jump, javelin discus. I loved it all, and I was really good at it all. And then year four, I got glasses. Um, so it's been from year four to this week that I've worn glasses. Um, and on top of wearing glasses, I had these problems with my feet, so I got injections. And uh, it blew me up, like I was round. And it was like this negative or opposite extreme makeover. It was really bad. And it just, it killed my self-esteem. And I got to high school, and basically every single day of high school, I was teased, I was bullied, mostly verbal, but sometimes physical. And it was really quite horrible. And you know, I look back on my life as a teenager, especially as a teenager, and my family completely falling apart and trying to deal with bullying and trying to feel some kind of positive self-esteem. <clears throat> and I was really struggling. And I look back now and I can, I can actually see God's protection on my life. Even though I wasn't a Christian, even though I didn't know God, I could actually see God's protection on my life. It was about a week after I found out my mum was leaving, literally a week. This is how I can see God working in my life. It was a week after, and I used to go to video stores all the time. Love movies, still do. Um, I've watched movies, like movies and videos every weekend. And I walked into this new video store a week after Mum left, and there was a very attractive lady walking, working behind the counter. And yeah, that's right, that's what I thought. Um, and I was like, oh, hey. Um, she's like 15 years old, you know. Like, hey, how you doing? No, I didn't, I didn't have the confidence. But I was, I was like, hey, um, do you want, you know, do you, can I help out on Friday nights? Got nothing better to do. And she said, yeah, sure. And after two weeks, she's like, what do you do Saturday nights? I'm like, oh, no, I'm just, I sit at home watching videos. So why don't you come to a youth group? So I decided to go along. And she kind of, uh, after uh, you know, six months or, or a year, she was gone, but I stuck with it and I stayed going. Um, and through this whole process, even though I didn't completely believe in my heart, through this whole journey, I can see God's protection. Moments where it looked like I was going to get bashed, or you know, stuff was going on, or something really bad was going on. Like I went through phases of real deep, dark depression, and I went through a whole suicide thing as well. All of this stuff going on when I'm growing up as a teenager. But what kept me alive, I think, was God's protection. And the thing that we have a lot of time, I don't think we understand, is that God, God is so protective over His children. It actually wasn't until when I was 18, when I completely opened my heart to God, that all this healing and stuff, you know, God actually taking the inner hurts that I had and, and did something with them, it did actually start, you know, really unfolding in my life, really changing until I opened my heart to God. Um, but it doesn't stop me from seeing the protection that God had over me. And it doesn't mean, because God's protecting you when you're a Christian, it doesn't mean you're invincible or you're immune. Although that would be cool. I mean, it would be a sweet excuse to wear underwear outside of your pants. You ever want to wear underwear outside of their pants before? Yes! Thank you! I see those. Yeah. I would feel really awkward if no one put their hand up. But it would be cool. But I oh, should move on. Um, but... It doesn't mean you're invincible and that you're immune, but it does mean 
And He will look after you when no one else will. He will guide you through the deepest, darkest moments of your life. If you haven't faced them now, I guarantee that you probably will. Because there are difficulties that we come across sometimes in life. And when you hit those really tough times, when you have God's 